Right now, Washington Mornings on the Mall. At AM 630. 807 on WML, where Washington comes to talk. It's Brian Wilson. We're joined today in studio by Dan Bongino, filling in for Larry O'Connor. He's taking some time. Dano, how do you like in radio so far? I like it. I got a face for radio. Yeah, you so got I, really, yeah, I, I do uh, appreciate been saying, it. They've been saying about that maybe for years. <laughs> uh, hey, Bill Crystal is on the line. Uh, Bill, how are you? Always a pleasure to have you. Appreciate, it, especially on this Getaway Wednesday. Uh, hi, Brian and Dan. How are you? You got any plans for the holidays, Bill? Just staying here with family, which will be nice. Not right. to drive. Not to drive up by ninety five for a change. Are you a stuffing guy or a dressing guy? I wasn't aware that that was a fundamental distinction of human types. I, I guess I, I, I haven't really made a. Re- I haven't re- do I have to choose that one? One of those? I don't know. <laughs> Stuffing, I think. So. All right. Well. Okay. Well, there's hope for you, maybe. Okay. Yeah, thank you. We can. I'll try to tra- t- turn you into a dressing guy. Okay. Look. Um, we got serious stuff to talk about. David Petraeus goes on Capitol Hill, and behind closed door, he basically said, "Hey, when it left the CIA, the talking points contained reference to terrorist and uh, an organized attack, and somewhere along the line, before it got uh, to Susan Rice and ended up on the Sunday talk shows, it got edited, and everybody was asked in the room, "Hey, was it you? No, it wasn't me. Was it you? No, it wasn't me." Well, now comes word that that. Uh, James Clapper, the director of national intelligence, says he was the one who edited the talking points. What do you think about that? Well, I guess he's going to take the hit here, and and maybe he's leaving anyway. Reports are before the second term. But look, it's the president's decision. The president spent the next two weeks trying to say that there was a video that was the cause of a demonstration that really didn't exist in Benghazi, and he talked about the video as late as two weeks later at the U.N., so my view on this is the president and the whole administration decided they wanted the story, the narrative, to be about a video. They didn't want to discuss for various reasons. There might have been good reasons. I don't think so. But you could pretend there are national security reasons, more likely just political reasons. They didn't want to discuss the fact that there was a well-organized terrorist attack in Benghazi on our ambassador and, and our mission there, and then on the annex, which was seen to be a CIA uh, asset. And uh, they didn't want to talk about it, and they didn't talk about it. So from my point of view, it's, it's an administration decision. It's the president's responsibility. And in some way, I don't know that it matters that much whether it was Clapper or Donilon or Brennan or whoever exactly changed the talking points. Clearly, there was a decision made to go in that direction. Was it politically motivated? I think so. I think they did not want to. We got the Democratic Convention where they were touting their success and destroying al-Qaeda with drone strikes. They did not want the notion that the U.S. ambassador for the first time in, what, 35 years, I think, 33 years maybe, was killed by terrorists and, and that we had lost our had a, uh, American uh, property over run in Benghazi and probably pretty important CIA operations disrupted. So I think there was a political effort to just cover it up. All right, so now here's the last, the last question in, that, in that, that series of questions. Does this now disqualify Susan Rice for being considered as Secretary of, uh, of State? You know, I don't know. I mean, <laughs> President Obama was reelected. She's a loyal servant of his administration. I'm not sure she's any worse than anyone else who served there. So um, if Clapper's not going to be removed for from DNI, and uh, if others aren't going to be dealt with, I'm not sure. Uh, I'm not sure I would wouldn't let President Obama have his choice. I would try to hold the whole administration, the whole administration, responsible for this for misleading the American public. But uh, there's not much you can do now, practically speaking, except just highlight the irresponsibility of the administration and highlight the fact that this came from a certain policy the administration chose. They touted it as a light footprint policy. That was the policy that Rumsfeld touted way back. In Iraq, as you recall, of you know we're not we don't want to intervene too much. We're going to sort of step step back. We stepped back in Libya. We had no Marines. We were very reticent. We had very few forces there. Period. Uh, we kept a low profile, and unfortunately, this is the price we paid. And I'm very worried that elsewhere in the world, where we're being very careful and not throwing our weight around, the effect of it is that we get uh, you know that we're treated not treated with great respect or fear, um, and it's bad for U.S. policy around the world. Yeah, unfortunately, uh, it is, Bill. Dan Bongino here. Uh, this fiscal cliff. You know, uh, the ho- Thanksgiving holidays, we have the fiscal cliff coming up, going to impact uh, the American economy. I don't think anybody questions that. I think stock prices are already being discounted to a large degree. And all of a sudden, of, uh, not surprisingly, I'm sure to you, uh, you've been around quite a while, uh, the holiday week, it's a ghost town. 
right. you know, I guess my question is almost a, more, of a, more of a statement question. Does anyone care anymore? I mean, does even the political ramifications of leaving town with this huge fiscal cliff overhang seem to bother them? Isn't there some scuttlebutt in the background that maybe we should do something before we go home and start chewing on a turkey and some stuffing, Brian? Or well, and, 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 and Brian's... Uh, um Dressing, you know, I don't want to. I don't want to. That's right. Brian I don't want to offend him. Well, Brian's got that. You know, he's he shot personally those turkeys, and so they need the dressing to dress. <laughs> oh, you up, heard that, huh? To cover up all the, you know, oh, buckshot right, right, that's right. in the in, in, in the in the. <laughs> We're gonna get some pita calls soon. Yeah, yeah, that's right. That was terrible. But I think it's a fair question, though. I mean, yeah, I mean, absolutely. they're not doing anything. Doesn't it look bad? Well, but look, this is a you know a Congress and administration that's blithely got along with trillion dollar deficits for four years in a row. The Fed keeps printing money. We keep running deficits as if this could go on forever. And so one more week, you know, what does it matter? It is unbelievable when you step back. I think when historians look at this period, they'll say, "What were people thinking?" I mean, they were just running up the credit debt on the credit card as if they would never have to pay it. Maybe we won't pay it. Maybe we'll default or we'll depreciate. But I mean, which both of which are terrible options. It's really no. I think it's but it's depressing when you think about the degree of fundamental irresponsibility, unwillingness to come to grips with the problems with the fact that we're spending much more than we're taking in uh, and bankrupting the country and going down the road of Illinois, California, Greece. Now, I think we can, be, we can turn it around. We're a rich country and an able country. Uh, we can get over this little fiscal cliff. Really, that's the least of our problems. That's almost just a patch. You know, let's get through with some patchwork to get through this. But if we don't get serious next year and have a real, you know, a real deal that really begins to deal with the deficit, I, I do worry about the future in a serious way. All right, so uh, on that point, you said something on Fox News a while back that, that has, has, has created a little bit of controversy. Uh, d- here it is. In case you forgot, we happen to have it here. Wow. Uh, isn't that nice of us? Yeah, that's good if you like. Uh, here we go. Here the push point. tax rates expire on December 31st. Rates are going up for everyone if nothing happens. If you think Republicans can win a showdown on preserving all the current ta- push tax rates against a president who's just reelected and gained seats in the Senate and the House on just raising rates on billionaires, well, good luck. I mean, I prefer this as a policy outcome. I don't think it's winnable. I think at the end, Republicans will cave. The question for me is, do you cave right now, get it out of the way, 4%, do it for a year if you want, just for a year, but full tax hike on the millionaires, get it out of the way so we can fight about tax reform, so we can fight about the big deal that has to happen next year, or Republicans are going to cave on December 29th, in my view. And, and then the other thing that you said was, you said, look, do we really want to defend a few millionaires? Some of them are Democrats and aren't really going to be with us anyway. And, and that really generated a lot of heat. Yeah, I know. I probably was being a little too flip about our millionaire friends, you know, and some of them obviously. Hey, look, it's important. I think it's bad economic policy. I voted for Mitt Romney. I, I'm for lower taxes, not higher taxes. But the majority of the voters didn't agree with me. He, he won the election running on this. Uh, he gained seats in the Senate. I, I think we Republicans lost seats in the House. I just think it's going to be hard, practically speaking, to not cut a deal with the president. With, with the rates automatically going up for everyone on January 1st, I think he has more leverage. So I would give in a little bit on the top rate. I would then come back and say, okay, now let's negotiate in 2013 for serious tax reform, which would probably lower the top marginal rates on everyone. So as a p- practical political matter, I just don't think Republicans have much leverage. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you know Republicans will hang tough. I just worry that they'll fight for a month and then capitulate, uh, having allowed Obama to spend a month painting Republicans. as The only thing they're fighting about, the only thing they care about, apparently, is the top marginal rates for millionaires. It's unfair, but this is politics, not you know logic, and you've got to make some decisions accordingly, I think. The other thing is, as a practical matter, would it be bad for the economy to raise top marginal rates 4%? Yes, I think so. Would it be disastrous for a year? No, I don't think so. Um, I don't think most economists think so. So I think it's the kind of political uh, judgment a party may have to make after it's lost two straight elections. I mean, the people who keep saying, oh, no, we should hang tough, we should hang tough, well, that's fine, but, you know, Romney didn't win the last the, the, yeah. election, and Obama did. All right. Bill Crystal, editor of the Weekly Standard, always a pleasure to have you on Happy the program. Happy Thanksgiving to you both, and enjoy getting that buckshot out of your, out of your teeth there. <laughs> All right. Thanks, Bill. You know? Thanks, Bill. <laughs> hey, hey, we're running a little late. Let's get to traffic and weather. Here's Jay.